Hi there, I'm Janelle Marie. Welcome to Body Beautiful. This is the show where we talk with local professionals about the latest in cosmetic procedures. With us today, we have plastic surgeon, Dr. Joseph Mealy. We're talking about a couple different procedures today. First up, breast implant revision surgery, followed by otoplasty. We're going to find out what that is. Gynecomastia, and then finally, lip augmentation. Before we get started, any advice we give you today, remember, consult your own physician before. All right, let's jump right in. New set, new yeah. studio. Let's talk about new breast implants. It, right. it just kind of all melds right in. That it's beautiful it. in here. It is. I love this new studio. It is gorgeous. All right, so welcome back, Dr. Mealy. Let's talk first about breast augmentation revision. Sure. When do we need that? Uh, usually you know when you need it. Uh, okay. It's, uh, what breast happens? Breast implants have become the most popular procedure. I think Absolutely. liposuction might beat it out last year. Uh, but with breast implants, there is some maintenance involved. Right. Uh, even the FDA has told us. You know, they're not lifetime uh, implants. It means they may not last as long as you do. Right. Uh, so things that can happen, they can deflate, uh, which is becoming less common with the newer gummy bear type implants. Yeah. Uh, they can get what's called capsular contracture. What's that? It's a fancy word for where the pocket that holds the implant in place gets too tight. Oh, so it gets so it hard? So it can make it feel hard. Oh, okay. Or, or move it. Okay. And we want them to stay where they're supposed to be. Uh, and then the other reason, most common reason, to put bigger implants in. Okay, so you can change the size or whatever, yes. and then if there's a problem. Is yes. it is it tough when you have to go in for a revision? Is that a tough surgery? It can be, depending on what needs to be done. Okay. Uh, you know, if it's something like a saline implant that's deflated, everything looked perfect before it deflated, that's pretty simple. We right. just take out the, the old one, put the new one in. There's no fix a flat, so we just put a new implant in, <gasps> fill it up, but the pocket was perfect before, it's perfect after, very simple. But what can deflate an implant? Like, what happens if you, do you get in a car accident? Does that deflate them? I mean, how it, does that happen? It can. Uh, okay. it can. Sometimes there's trauma, you fall right on it, you know, especially right. on the corner of a, something sharp. You know, really? Not, not what you want to do. Probably better to have the implant there anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the others, uh, sometimes it's just spontaneous. Okay. Uh, where maybe the implant in one corner is wrinkling and wrinkling and eventually it fails and breaks. All right, we have got before and after photos. Let's take Excellent. a look at our first one. All right, what, oh yes. So when they deflate, they do this. So that is a deflation So you there. can still see oh. the left breast, the right breast completely deflated. Wow. Uh, afterwards, she wanted to upsize a little bit, so we did use a little bit larger implant. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Didn't need to do a lift or anything, because no. that's what's called pseudotosis. It's not real so tosis, it's just deflation, which we often see after uh, pregnancy also. Oh my goodness. And the implant just restores the volume there. So only one side was deflated on that? Correct, one? Okay. correct. All right, let's go to picture number two. So this then is, uh, you were asking about car accidents? Yeah. Okay, this was a car accident. Really? So she got hit on the, she was driving, got hit okay. on the driver's side, her left implant capsule got ruptured wow. in the implant and lowered the implant. Uh, oh, so I we see. went back and it's replaced little, yeah. them both. And, uh, wow. And uh, yeah, very common, I guess, in my pictures today. Also wanted right. to be a little bit bigger, so we put a little bit bigger oh, okay, implants so in. okay, so she put bigger implants also. in. But now they're even. You know, the yeah. problem before was in They were a little uneven. Yeah, you could, yeah. exactly, you can kind of tell. When they're not even, it's not good. All right, another picture. So this is rippling. Oh, yeah, I can see the ripple there on the left side there. So I put a couple arrows to hopefully make oh, it okay. easier. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a part that's kind of bulging out in between mm -hmm. them, and then there's two dimples on each side, and that's not ideal, so especially in that position. What makes them ripple? So these are saline implants, but it can happen with saline or gel implants. Okay. Uh, sometimes the capsule gets a little bit tight mm -hmm. and buckles the implant. Okay. Uh, sometimes they just weren't inflated enough. Uh, but that's less likely. Uh, and so what I've done is go in, open up the, uh, the scar to get things bigger. Yeah. And then just, uh, in some cases, we need to put a new implant in there. Sometimes we can use the same. In this case, I changed Looks from saline good. to silicone, which helps. Look at this. Okay, so. Do you remember oh. this one? Simmastia. Simmastia. Yeah, so. Okay, so that's when. The breasts are becoming one. Okay, so I see that. So it's also called bread loafing or uniboob. Okay. Sometimes people uniboob. call it that. <laughs> so the, what happens, I don't know if it's this, that the implants were too big with too high a profile. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that will lift the skin in the middle. Uh, sometimes it's positional. If you're sleeping on your side, you can imagine pushing the implant past the middle. You sleep on the other side, pushes the other one past the middle. So these pockets actually overlap. Oh, geez. So it's one of the more difficult things to yeah, fix. Yeah, how do you fix that? But we have to repair that opening in the middle. Okay. So it's not like they're, they're connected, but what I need to do is push the two implants back apart and then sew the capsule down so that it doesn't allow the implant back in there. And sometimes we need to use alloderm or something else in order to, to fill reinforce in a little bit. it. Or, yeah, or Siri, there's lots of different options now. What happened now. here? So this is capsular contracture. So capsular contracture squeezes the implant. So the implant looks smaller, okay. tends to project a little bit more, gotcha. and often the breast will fall off of it. Oh, So if you look at the gotcha. lower pole, okay. it looks like it's kind of hanging. Yeah, it does. Uh, it's not filled so that's with the, the implant because the implant's been pushed up by the capsule okay. contracture. So same thing here, we either remove the capsule, in this case I just removed the whole thing because it was calcified. Oh, wow. uh, If it's just a thin capsule, we can just open it. Looks and great. And then a new implant's in there. 
All right, that's our last picture. Awesome. For more information about Dr. Mealy, you can call him at 925-943-6353 or check him out on the web. That would be drmealy.com or sanfranciscobreast.com. All right, we have lots more. Stay tuned to Body Beautiful. Lots more about plastic surgery coming right back. The information and advice given on this program is for general informational purposes only. For medical advice on specific treatments, medical professionals should be consulted. You should not initiate a course of treatment without consulting a qualified doctor.